Today we're going to be reviewing how to solve equations. This is part of chapter 7, um, and we have already learned this material. This is just a review to freshen it back up in our minds. It's our last part of this um, learning is going to be chapter 7. So we are going to start off with just how to write an equation, given like a word sentence, and then we're going to get into solving. Just a little quick review. Write the word sentence as an equation. So we have a number x is decreased by 3 is 5. Those are all the important things that we're told. And we're just going to write it left to right. So x is being decreased. Decrease tells us that that's going to be subtraction. Because when a number is decreased by like 5, we would subtract 5. So x decreased by 3 is x minus 3 is means equals 5. And that's our equation. A number a divided by 7 equals 14. So we have a divided by 7 equals 14. Remember, we don't have to use this division sign. We could always use a fraction bar too. a over 7 equals 14 because remember, a fraction bar is the same thing as division. So either way that we would write this would be correct. Okay, so that was just a quick review on writing equations. Now we're going to get into solving equations. To solve an equation you want to get the variable. Remember that the variable is just the letter all by itself on one side of that equal sign. Okay, so if our k is over here we want just the k to be over here. We want to get rid of that plus 4. We want that variable all by itself. So in order to get rid of that plus 4 we use the inverse operation which just means opposite, remember, of what's used in the problem to cancel out a number. So if we have a plus 4 in the problem, we're going to use minus 4 to get rid of it. If we have divide by 4 in the problem, we're going to use times 4 to get rid of it. Remember, addition and subtraction are inverse operations, and multiplication and division are inverse operations. Remember when we have a number next to a letter, what that means is 3 times a. It's just understood that that's multiplication. We don't have to write that sign. So in order to solve this, we would do divide by 3. So just those are just a couple little hints that we're going to remember as we're solving these equations. If you feel like you remember this material enough and you don't need to watch the video, you want to go, through, go ahead and start trying to solve these problems on your own and use the video to check, totally fine. Okay. Let's start off with number 3. We have our k by ourself. Remember, we are going to circle that k. I don't want to over that plus sign, circle that k, draw our line down our equal sign. We want that k to be all by itself. So we have to get rid of a plus 4. To get rid of a plus 4, we subtract 4. We have to do that to both sides of the equal sign to keep that equation true. We can't just subtract 4 from this side because otherwise they're not going to be equal anymore. And that equal sign can't be there. Okay, so we have 4 minus 4. That cancels out to 0. 0 plus k is just k. We have 14 minus 4 is 10. So our final answer would be k minus 10. Again, now if it's starting to come back to you, feel free to pause the video and try a couple of these on your own. You can always just jump back into the video when you get stuck um, or when you need to check. We'll draw that line down that equal sign, circle our m. We want to get rid of a minus 2 and 2 tenths, so we add 2 and 2 tenths. If we do that to the right side of the equal sign, we have to do that to the left side of the equal sign. Remember when we add decimals, we want to line those decimals up and bring that decimal down into our answer. 5 plus 2 is 7, 3 plus 2 is 5. So we have 5.7 equals 2.2 .2 minus 2.2. .2. Those will cancel out. We get 5.7 equals m. Number five, draw that line down that equal sign, circle our x. All right, we can't get rid of a minus 12 because we're not subtracting 12 from x. We're subtracting x from 12. Okay, so there's two different ways we can do this. This was one of those where if we have something minus x, we should really be adding that x first. Um, to make sure that it's a positive x. Right now we have like a minus x, a negative x. We don't want to know what negative x is equal to. We want to know what positive x is equal to. I'll show you another way if this way didn't make sense to you when we learned it earlier, um, that we could do it as well. So we'd add x to both sides. It looks like it doesn't really help us out. 
But now we have an equation that we can solve. We can't combine 8 plus x because they're not like terms, so we would just write it 8 plus x. We want to get that x by itself. Can we get rid of a plus 8? Yes, we can by subtracting 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. 0 plus x is just x. 8 minus, or sorry, 12 minus 8 is 4. All right, I'm going to, just in purple, kind of like right here, show you another way that you could do this. Um, it's not the preferred method because we haven't learned much about negatives, um, but if this is something that you're not going to be able to remember how to do, maybe this method will work. Okay, again, we always want to leave our x um, alone, so if you need to get rid of a 12, think about like 12 plus 12, does that cancel out to 0? No, that equals 24. 12 minus 12, that cancels out. So let's maybe subtract 12 from both sides. 12 minus 12 is 0, so we have just a minus x. Now, since we don't know negatives, this is why I don't like to teach this way to 6th graders. Um, in 7th grade, you'll learn this method because you'll know how to do negatives. Um, but maybe some of us do know how to do negatives, or we are using a calculator, so maybe that can help us out. And we would take 8 minus 12, and we're going to get the answer of negative 4. Okay, so if negative x is negative 4, that means positive x is positive 4. Remember, we can think of negative signs as opposite. So the opposite of x is the opposite of 4. So the opposite of x is x. Opposite of negative, or sorry, yep, the opposite of negative 4 is 4. Notice how we get the same answer. Again, I would not suggest using this method because that's something we haven't learned yet with negatives. Um, that's why in sixth grade we teach you this method, but both will get you to the correct answer. Number six. We have to first think about, well, we'll draw a line. Think about what that fraction bar means. That fraction bar means division. So this is x divided by 4. How do we get rid of divide 4? We do times 4. Remember, we show multiplication with parentheses. Divide 4 times 4 cancels out because that's just 1, and x divided by 1 is just x. 12 times 4, 48. So we get x equals 48. Again, feel free to pause the video, try some of these on your own. Just resume it to check. Draw a line down our equal sign, 8x. What 8x actually is is 8 times x. Remember, we just don't have to write that multiplication sign. So how do we undo times x? We, or sorry, how do we undo times 8? We divide by 8. And remember, we show division with a fraction bar. This is how they're going to have you show your work um, in 7th grade, 8th grade, 9th grade, 10th grade. So it's just what we're getting you in the habit of. 64 divided by 8. Why not 8 times 8 is 64? So 64 divided by 8 is 8. Using those fact families to help you out a little bit. Last but not least, we have 20 equals 14 plus x. Circle max, I need to get rid of a plus 14. Notice how this is different from the example up here because this is something minus x, a number minus x, a number plus x. We don't have to do those funky methods for because we can get rid of a plus 14. We just subtract 14. 14 minus 14, 0. 0 plus x is just x. 20 minus 14 is 6. And that is all for a review on solving equations.